Hey, I'm Chris Roth, the professional prospector, and today I'm coming to talk to you about epithermal gold and silver deposits. These are the bonanzas that are spread over a lot of the western US, but they're actually found worldwide. There was bonanza gold and silver in Germany, in, in Turkey, there's places like this in, in Peru and South America, uh, there's even some epithermal deposits in Australia and some other places. So it, it, not every deposit falls into this category, but a lot of them do. And uh, some of the grades in some of these kind of deposits were amazingly high. Today, I'm coming to you from Virginia City, Nevada, and we're at the spot that some 160 years ago, roughly, an amazing find was made. There was a couple of guys, a couple of prospectors, they were down on their luck, and, and they really, you know, were basically they were fed up with this whole area they'd been here for a while and and they thought now nah, we're gonna we're gonna move on we got to find someplace better to go and so they were looking around for some place that they could get together a grub stake so that they could leave the area right and they came just about right here and within a few hundred feet of where I'm standing and there was, uh, there's a canyon up behind me that you can probably see. Here, I'll get out of the way a little bit. You can see the canyon behind me. And there had been snow and it was springtime and, and uh, they wanted to have water so that they could process some gravel that they had. And so they dug into a little spring here and they dug into the spring to get some more water and there was some crazy black, blue kind of clay, mud stuff, but amazingly that stuff had a lot of gold in it. And uh, it was like nothing that they'd found anywhere else in this area. It was just amazingly rich. I mean, they were getting, you know, a, a, like a regular bucket full that we think they were getting 20 and 30 bucks out of a bucket full. And, and that was like an ounce of gold. Okay, 20 and 30 bucks 160 years ago, that was huge money. And, and the, the stuff that they found was a lot like this. I'm showing you this rock. I'll, I'll come in for a, a close up. Can you see the, the kind of blue black layer right here? Um, I'll put a, 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 a close-up photo and, and a still photo of this. Here you can see a close-up of that specimen that I was holding in my hand. And you can see kind of running through the middle of it from uh, left to right is a, a band of dark colored material. And that's the dark colored silver sulfides. There's really tiny gold mixed into those sulfides but there's a, a lot of silver too. And this, this would be a really rich specimen. Here you can see the minerals in it. And this would probably run something on the order of 40 or 50 ounces of silver per ton and maybe around a half an ounce of gold. That's what they found, only they were finding the stuff on top of the Comstock load that was all weathered and, um, and, and broken up but just by the natural weathering process. But it was releasing huge amounts of gold. But this blue-black stuff, man, it was a pain in the neck because it was heavy too. And it was clogging up all the riffles on their sluice box and they were having to clean it out and they cleaned out the blue-black stuff and threw it aside because it was junk, right? Well, not really. <laughs> the, the news of their find got out and this all this gold they were finding and there were some folks in the area that they were here too and, and they decided to come up and check it out and and check out this new find that had been made. And one of the guys thought, you know, I should have this assayed. I should have it checked. And he took a sample of that blue black junk and took it to an assay uh, shop. Oh, about 120 miles from here at uh, Grass Valley in California. And they did their assay and of course it came out as super high grade silver and gold ore. And the guy ran back up to here and people found out that it was super high gold ore, high, high grade gold and silver ore, rich in, super rich in silver. And the story got out and of course that was the beginning of the famous Comstock load. 
And there's been other stories that I could tell you about other discoveries that have been made in this area, but we're gonna take a look at those, some of those famous districts and the ore that they produced and the super high grade. And in fact, to this day, there are still mines of this kind of material, some of them richer in gold and silver, that are still being mined in Nevada today. And we're gonna talk more about that as we get along. So come along with me, we're gonna look at the geology of high grade epithermal gold deposits. Okay, so I wanna talk about what the ore from these kinds of deposits look like. And I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of different uh, ore samples and uh, let you take a look at that up close. The examples from here, from the Comstock load, they all are in the, the category, like I mentioned before, they're rich in uh, base metals. I mean, there's spots that are rich in base metals and silver minerals. So the blue black stuff that they got here at the Ophir claim was real rich in black silver sulfides. And I'm gonna show you some examples so that if you're out looking for this kind of deposit you want to know what does the ore look like what does the bonanza gold and silver ore from the comstock and from some other places look like now i'll tell you that not every bonanza epithermal uh gold and silver deposit looks the same you know a lot of almost all of them have quartz vein material but some of them like the comstock load here when there's several hundred feet wide of quartz vein here. And, and it goes that way, uh, which is, is to the south, it goes that way for several miles. So it, the Comstock was huge, but as it, as it went down into the earth, you know, it went from being 500 feet wide, 400, 300, 200, and, you know, down a few hundred feet, it may only be 40 or 50 feet wide. But still, that's pretty, pretty impressive. But I want you to know what the ore looks like. A lot of it, like I say, has quartz vein material. A lot of it will have pyrite, which is uh, fool's gold, but pyrite can still have values in it. And it's not unusual that pyrite contains values. But a lot of it will have dark colored sulfide mineralization, kind of like this little veinlet in this piece of quartz. Um, this piece has uh, bits of galena, which is a lead sulfide, little bits of uh, salarite, which is a zinc sulfide, and little bits of pyrite, which is an iron sulfide, and then it'll have a variety of silver minerals, including like argentite or canthite, which is silver sulfide, but it'll have polybasite, freebergite, uh, uh, um, a whole bunch of ruby silvers and, and other things that will be mixed in with the base metals that are in these ores. And I'm going to go over some of those with you and show you some of those minerals and some of the specimens of it so you can know what the rich bonanza grade ore looks like. And that's good both for if you're out prospecting in the field or if you decide to go to like a, a dump, like the dump behind me, and look for specimens of high grade ore in the dump, eh, you know what it looks like so you can find it. Now I'll tell you, this stuff is not sensitive to metal detector. I've actually used metal detectors on the dumps here at Virginia City. And you know, unless you run into some really super rich gold, you're, you're not gonna see anything with a metal detector. But you can eyeball some pretty impressive specimens out of some of these dumps and I'm gonna show you how to do that and, and show you some examples of ore, and we're gonna talk about that. And you do, then maybe you can bring a hammer out to some of these dumps and, and bust some specimens open and see some real nice ore if you get into it. So let's take a look at some pictures of high grade ore that has come from some of the mines in Nevada and elsewhere around the world. This is stuff that is a lot of it rich in silver, but some of it's rich in uh, gold too. Some of it honestly is more rich in gold than, than silver. Um, it's just a variation of both gold and silver. Some more more one than others and some you know the other way around. So here's a piece of Bonanza grade, high grade ore from uh, one of the ore bodies that consolidated uh, Con Virginia and California mine. It's called the Big Bonanza in uh, Virginia City. And you can see the gray and dark colored minerals there with the white quartz and it's those gray dark colored minerals that contain the rich silver deposits. 
Our next slide is also from the Ofer where I was filming the earlier video in this in this video. And this uh, again shows the dark gray black material that's rich in silver and honestly rich in gold too. Now this next slide is perargyrite. And this is an important mineral rich in silver. It's, it's a mineral that silver is one of the chief elements of and it uh, was a, a big contributor to the silver content of the ore at Virginia City. This next slide shows uh, some very fine uh, filaments of nominite, which is a mineral you won't see listed in a lot of uh, Con Virginia, Virginia City uh, type ore deposits. But this is, again, a, a slab of material that uh, is from the Comstock load and has rich dark silver mineralization in it. Our next slide is another piece of Virginia City ore and you can see the spots of black sooty looking material and again this is the silver in the ore. Now our next slide we're going to a different district this is from Austin, Nevada, also an important silver district in the state of Nevada. And you can see again this gray colored material. The Austin ores are richer in silver and not as rich as gold, but in gold as the Comstock ores were. But again, I'm getting you a chance to see a lot of different kinds of ores. Uh, our next slide is going to be another piece of ore from Austin, rich in silver but uh, uh, also shows how this material uh, just lays down with the quartz. Our next slide is from a silver mine in central Nevada near Gilbert. And again, the black sooty looking spots. Now, I need to emphasize that um, in areas, you know, in, in quartz mines, uh, you can have black sooty looking minerals that aren't silver. It's just that when you do have silver, this is the common appearance. Our next slide is some ruby silver ore. Uh, you can again see the black material in there that uh, shows the black with the quartz, that shows that the silver is present. And then this next one is a high-grade specimen from, on from Ontario, Canada, where uh, they mine huge amounts of silver there silver and cobalt and some other minerals but uh, this is a piece of very high grade silver ore. Our next specimen is from Tonopah in central Nevada and is rich it shows the dark colored minerals in the quartz but this is a piece that is rich in both gold and silver and, and that's kind of the, the thing that we're looking at in a lot of these ores is that they're rich in both gold and silver. The next specimen we're going to look at is a bit of silver ore, silver gold ore, from Creed in Colorado. And this shows the banding that's common in a lot of these ores. Now in some ores, um, the banding will be very obvious, like this specimen. In other ores, it's less obvious, but still if you look for it closely, you'll see it. And so these bands of dark colored silver minerals with light colored quartz and calcite is a real key to recognizing these ores. If you'll remember the ore that we saw at the beginning that I showed you the hand specimen of, it also has bands or lines of rich silver mineralization. Our next specimen is uh, from Japan and shows again uh, white quartz with banding of uh, dark silver bearing silver rich minerals that uh, are rich in silver and gold. The next specimen I want to show you is a piece from Mexico and it is like I say super rich in both gold and silver. There's some visible gold here as well as silver mineralization and it belongs to this same class of ore deposit what they call epithermal ore deposits. Epithermal just basically is a geologist term that means it was formed fairly close to the surface at comparatively lower temperatures. It's still hot 
but it's not as hot as it might be if it were deeper down in the earth and uh, generally speaking these deposits form fairly close to the surface not right necessarily at the surface but perhaps a quarter mile or a half a mile down a lot of them form. Our next specimens are from the high-grade district of Goldfield in Nevada and Goldfield of course was famous for these uh, ores that were super rich I mean literally they had um, some of them multiple ounces of gold per pound of ore rock and some of these are uh, contain so much gold that they're uh, sensitive on a metal detector you can see specimens like this if you were to run over one with a metal detector it would scream off at you because of all the gold in it another uh, piece here is also from Goldfield showing the gold sprinkled liberally through the specimen uh, then you had this little box here with a couple of specimens somebody collected way back in the day. Uh, the day that the Goldfield was producing huge amounts of this super high grade was back around the turn of the century, um, maybe 115 years ago. And it, this little box looks like it was a box that they put the gold specimens in 115 years ago. And finally, here's one more specimen of a goldfield ore, again showing the super high-grade nature of the gold, the banding, as it goes through the quartz. The next specimen I want to show you is from Fire Creek in Nevada. And now, if you look closely at this, you'll know that the gold, it looks a little funny. The gold is kind of pale colored. It's because the gold contains a lot of silver. And it's not unusual in Nevada that the gold will have an abnormal amount of silver in it. Both the gold that was found at the surface at the Comstock load, the story I told you a little bit ago about the two prospectors down on their luck that found the top of this amazing ore body, uh, their gold was very pale in color, but still had a lot of value. And this gold from Fire Creek in north central Nevada um, is similar. It's it's what they call electrum. It's a natural alloy of gold and silver, enough silver that it makes the gold kind of pale in color. Now some of the other mines in Nevada, here's a specimen of electrum from Nevada that um, is in a beautiful crystalline pattern. This is from the Manhattan District in Nye County, Nevada, and it's a beautiful specimen of electrum. Nye County produced a lot of placer gold too and some of the placer was pale like this. Here's another uh, specimen only this you can see doesn't have the pale colored gold in it. It's uh, your normal yellow colored gold so not all gold from, uh, from epithermal type deposits is of the pale electrum type that has a lot of silver in it. So of it's just like this. You see this spongy piece of gold that was formed and uh, is of the full normal yellow color. This is also from Nevada. Here's a piece that was found by um, a friend of mine. We were out metal detecting together and you can see there the wires of pale colored gold. This is uh, also an electrum specimen and uh, it was found with a metal detector. And is a beautiful example of the kind of gold that some of the, the high-grade mines in Nevada produced. Then next we have this wire gold specimen. It was also found with a metal detector, but you can see the beautiful crystalline wires that were formed. And again, we have the specimen I showed you a second ago with Electrum, and then here's another with a metal detector. It was taken in Nevada that shows the beautiful yellow color. Now, one of the most famous mines in Nevada that's still in production and has been for more than a century is the Round Mountain Mine in central, central Nevada. Here is a picture of a lady with a pan full of gold. I'm told that when this picture was taken, she had to have two real strong guys help get her into position so that she could hold this pan. And uh, the pan was supposed to weigh almost 70 pounds. And then when uh, they got her set and ready and the photographer was ready to go, the two guys stepped out of the picture. They took the picture of the lady with this pan full of giant nuggets and then the two guys stepped in to help her with it so that uh, 
and it didn't get dropped on the ground because 70 pounds, that's a, that's a lot of weight to hold even for a few seconds. Um, Round Mountain is famous for producing some beautiful crystalline specimens like this one. Uh, some of these sell for very large prices over the amount of gold that's in them. Uh, they're worth uh, hunting for. Now, Round Mountain, of course, is an active mine, and you're not going to get in there to hunt gold specimens in, in an active operating mine. But still, um, you know, some of these areas, there's open areas and areas that aren't well prospected, and they're worth exploring. Here's another specimen from Round Mountain. I saw this at the Tucson Gem Show. It was for sale uh, there in one of the booths, and I, I took a picture of it. This was a, a large specimen of gold, big as your fist. Now let's take a look at some of the minerals that are found in these super rich bonanza gold and silver ores. Probably one of the most common is this mineral here. This is a canthite, or it's, as it's called in a lot of older reports, argentite. And uh, it is a silver sulfide mineral. Here's a, an example of it uh, in a more earthy form. It tends to, uh, to form these earthy, sooty looking accumulations in quartz vein. The one that I showed you a second ago that has the crystals on it, there are uh, weird growths of crystals. Yeah, those are much less common. It's the earthy versions that, like this that are the most common. I had a piece of this assayed. Um, a friend of mine did it for me. And it assayed more than 350 ounces of silver per ton. But it assayed 50 ounces of gold per ton. Just pretty darn impressive. The next mineral that I want to show you is what's called ruby silver. You can see the red in this that um, you can see in the crystals. And actually, ruby silver is sometimes clear enough that you can see through it. But it's uh, not that common, and uh, but it's very rich. It's a very rich mineral and was mined in a lot of mines uh, in the western U.S., but across the world as well. Here's another uh, sample of the same uh, ruby silver perargyrite. Um, this one, of course, is uh, black, but the difference being that uh, a lot of times this mineral, uh, when it's exposed to sunlight, will actually turn black, and it turns black from some of the silver in the mineral turning to metallic silver, at least uh, you know, tiny microscopic amounts of it, enough to color the mineral black. Here's another mineral. Um, the mineral polybasite, and it also is a rich silver mineral that's common in a lot of high-grade silver ores. And then finally, stephanite. This is a crystalline example of a rich silver mineral known as stephanite. And you can see from all these examples the, the ruby silver, the polybasite, the canthite, all of it, it, it tends to form black colored minerals um, some well crystallized, some not, but uh, it's, it's something that you keep an eye out. If you find um, specimens of quartz with black minerals in it, it's either iron or possibly silver, and uh, some testing will tell you whether or not it's iron. Often the iron is magnetic, although not always. The silver will not be magnetic. So testing will, when you look at these ores, will will tell you uh, more about them. So now let's take a look at the geology of these epithermal deposits. They often form fairly near the surface and in situations where magma is present. The heat from the magma is what drives the circulation system that circulates the metal bearing solutions that deposit these veins and deposit the gold and silver and create these rich deposits like at the Comstock load and like uh, other places. Here's another diagram of it that just shows that down deep uh, the purple is more base metals, the uh, red is richer, will be richer in precious metals, and then there'll be kind of a barren zone, and then on the surface you'll have maybe hot springs, you can see little puffs of steam on this diagram, and what they call sinter, which is a silica deposit formed at the hot springs. Another key of these kinds of deposits is the fact that the circulation of those 
fluids deposit sulfur in the rock, literally in the cracks of the rock, as the liquids circulate through it. And then when the, the rocks are near the surface and there's groundwater it gets through there and air, that sulfur will actually be oxidized to an acid. And then the acid will bleach and leach and alter the rock. And so you can see in this picture with Virginia City in the background, but in the road cut right next to me, is a bleached and altered rock that's been changed by the effect of sulfur turning into acid and then partly decomposing the rock. That's what the, the leaching and bleaching happens, the alteration that happens from the, the attack by acid on the rock. And then there's this photo. Um, this will help you see on the right hand side you can see an area of rock that's not altered or at least is only minimally altered and minimally affected by the sulfur acid that bleaches and leaches and alters the rock and then on the left you see the lighter colored more heavily altered rock that's formed from the attack of acid on the rock uh, in place. It's these types of altered areas that can be a clue to you when you're out looking I do suggest that uh, if you're going to go hunt for these types of deposits in the field, that perhaps the best places to look for them are places that are at least in the vicinity of where they've been found before. So if you're in an area that's produced this type of rich bonanza grade gold, silver, or, um, you know, there may be more deposits in the area that haven't been found. And, these kinds of altered rocks are a good clue that you'll want to follow up on. So another great place to get out and find uh, mineral specimens in some of these Bonanza districts, you know, when you're, you're in an area where there's Bonanza grade gold and silver, I mentioned already hunting on some of the dumps, but one of the other places to hunt is around old milling sites like this. And again, you can see the keep out and the danger and all over the building. And so I'm not recommending getting in the building, but on the ground around this place, um, there's specimens of gold and silver ore that might be interesting for you to collect. And uh, places like this do have uh, some good grade. Uh, this was a custom mill that people in at the turn of the century, um, you know, 100 years ago, uh, 80 and 90 years ago, would bring their ore from their mine. You could be mining in some other place and they would bring it here. And for a fee, of course, they would process the rock and extract the gold and silver for you. There's still actually a few um, custom mills like that around today though not nearly as many. In the old days, there were actually quite a few of these things out and about in various places in Nevada and California and all over the West. But uh, around custom mills like this, you can find some specimens of uh, high grade Bonanza gold and silver ore, even in ones, you know, I've, I've been to ones where we've found some really high grade stuff where there's not even any building left. All you can see is maybe some of the foundations. But as they were bringing their ore and rock here, a lot of times some of it would get spilled. And so if you can find the place where they input the ore into the, the mill, then you want to look around those areas and you may find some really high grade uh, gold and silver ore. And that's my tip for you about old mills in Bonanza gold and silver districts. Okay, so I mentioned about finding specimens in the old dumps, but I really want to be specific about not going in old mines. The sign here, it says danger, unsafe mine. And behind me, that, that iron structure, that's actually a structure over the top of a shaft that goes down at least 300 feet into the ground. And it's, it's open like that, so actually so bats can fly in and out to give bat habitat. But uh, I was actually here when they broke, because that shaft over there was put through, technically as a winds, put up from uh, below and I was here when they broke through to the, the surface in 1981. Um, we had a big celebration. I was with the mining company that did that. But you want to stay out of old mines. They can be really dangerous. I don't recommend it. If you watch my videos, you'll never see me recommending going in old mines. 
it's it's a, a good idea to stay out but the old dumps a lot of times and some of the areas around the old mines can actually have some really great specimens so um, if you're out hunting around some bonanza epithermal gold silver deposits the dumps are the place you want to look because I found some really great specimens on the old dumps and I know other people who found really awesome specimens on the dumps too. So those are my comments about prospecting for and finding high grade specimens of uh, bonanza gold silver ores and I think that you'll find it really productive. Now of course the next step in the process, the next step after finding some nice specimens of this stuff is then extracting the gold and silver. Well, you're in luck because coming up in, it'll be a month or more before I start getting really into that, but coming up is going to be some videos on taking that ore, crushing it, extracting the sulfides and valuable minerals out of that, and turning that into relatively pure silver and gold. And so I think you'll really like those and, uh, and they're coming up. Now, uh, prospecting is a skill and any skill, what you know makes the difference in how skilled you are. And to increase the skill of prospectors and to get you more of that knowledge that you need to be successful in finding gold and or silver, I wrote a book. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold and I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself fistful of gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed and so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below, but there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos and you know, like it and share it if again you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos and so we'll see you again real soon.